Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Total War Rome 2 on the Medieval 1180 mod. And today we're going to be playing as the North Expedition. And I asked the creator of the mod, Starsmil, who should play any he recommended North, the North Expedition on hard mode. That's of course what we're going to do. If you want, you can pause it right here to see all the details. But I'm not going to go over it now, let's just go into the campaign here. And of course, we start off in England as the one and only Magnus Barefoot, who was the last king of Norway to die outside of Norwegian borders. Kind of cool, but I'm Danish, so I don't really care. <laughs> Fuck you, Norway. Not really. All fun games, okay? But also, just to tell you now, this recording here, this audio is playback, because when I recorded the video, my microphone and everything didn't really seem to work out for me because there was a lot of background noise. So bear in mind with me here, I I speak in advance already knowing what's gonna happen. But look at this, we have Magnus Barefoot and we have one other character and one other faction, not really gonna matter. And we are Catholic and we have a lot of gold in our treasury. But there isn't really that much else going for us, except for us being a kingdom, of course. But nothing really else matters here, because we are all alone with a large army, though, in enemy territory. We are on the British Isles. We are in Great Britain, right outside of Edinburgh. And we need to do something here. And that, of course, is going to be to move out of the stanza, which is a very unique stance for this mod here. And there's a lot of different details here, you can look at them now, if you want to. I'm just reading them through, through myself now. And then after that, we're gonna attack Edinburgh. But war on them, of course, and try to take them out. And the cool thing about this mod is, every settlement, or most settlements, are walled. Settlements who actually had a castle in them are walled, I believe. That's why we're gonna have to build siege equipment to actually take them out. We are gonna besiege them here, but they luckily for us, sally out. So we of course have to fight them on the field. I have a few forces here, but nothing we can't handle. But as it's been quite a long time since I actually played this mod here, I still need to get back into the groove here to see how these units behave, and how the AI behaves, and how strong the different units are compared to each other, what's strong against what, and so on. But one thing is for certain, in all games, archers are better on a hill. So we are going to put wall hours up there, but now we need to figure out what should be in the center, and what should be out on the flanks. We see these house cowls here, and they are a perfect flanking unit, so we are going to put them out here on the left side, then I look at these armored axe warriors, thinking to myself, they look like good frontal units with all their armor. But I will soon find out that there are these guys here, the Dugu Spearmen here, probably should be a frontal unit because they have the shield wall trait, which is very good to have on frontal unit. That means they can hold on without for a long time. But they are not going to stand up there alone because they are very weak all alone. So I actually find the general and thinks they should probably be up front because they are so strong. With them up there they can deal a lot and I really mean a lot of damage. Okay so what we're about to do now is just set up our formation here with our front units up front here. Making sure they are positioned right and basically everything should be right now in terms of where people are supposed to be. We have the right units on the left flank as well as on the right. We have one unit of spearmen over on the left and no one on the right because we only have three spearmen units and two of them up front as well. So we can do what we have with. We can, we can make do with. Yeah. We can make do with what we have. But it's also about it because we don't actually have any cavalry. It's a really big problem, but. We're gonna do our best to try and defend. Or in this case, attack. Is it a defense when they sell out against us? I don't know. 
just look at these units here, they are so cool. I'm in love with these models here. The chainmail, the beards, it's, a, it's amazing. But right now, I look at the cavalry behind and realize I'm actually supposed to fight a battle here, so... I wasn't really prepared for them being this aggressive. So, now, what, I, what I'm doing is just starting to put everything in place. Sending out an extra, an extra unit of spearmen out there to deal with the cavalry, because there aren't actually any up on the right. That's why we're sending our right flank forward, as well as pushing our center forward as well, and just turning them a bit. And we can see here that the enemy cavalry also have a horse archer unit. And everything over there on that side is just chaos. But basically our archers, they're going to target the horse archers at some point. For now, we're just making sure that all our infantry are actually engaged so we don't get destroyed by, by archers. At this point there are, there are only two. The remaining archers are coming in later. We need to take these guys up before the reinforcements arrive. And there we go, now we target the horse I just. And just to show you a few more details of the battle here, and how good everything is in this mod here with the lovely graphics. And you know what? I'm just gonna leave you with the rest of this battle here so you can see everything. I'm not gonna edit it or anything, you can just see me moving around and everything. Enjoy.
So, with the battle over, and we won with the Pyrrhic victory. It's not that good. It's actually very bad for us. Because this was the first battle here, and we need all these good units here. And now we're probably going to lose a lot of them. Oh, spoiler alert. When we go into the battle against Edinburgh here and actually auto solve it, Although it does say we get a lot of uh, survivors, we still lose some of our most important units here. Like, the last spearmen we lose, and a lot of other things, and we don't really have that much left now. This is really bad for us. But we're gonna have to shoot some new guys, but we need to figure out how to do that, because we don't have any recruitment buildings here. But everything in this mod is very expensive. And it's very costly in terms of time as well. And that's because this mod here is in 12 turns per year, I think. Basically, this uh, barracks building here is one year in the game built. And we don't really get anything from the recruitment or for the, I should say, the town center building, the castle in this case here. But we do from the barrack, and that's why we're gonna convert this one, or at least keep it for now. But in the future, we're gonna convert it to be one of our own culture, so it, we actually can create our own units. Come, sit, and also, when an army stands inside a settlement, you take full guard penalty. And right now, I'm just looking for these uh, traits here, because I really want to find something it gives us a, ch a chance in terms of ambushing, replenishment, night battles, just anything that gives us an gives us advantage over our enemies. Because that is going to be a problem for us, a huge problem. Because as you can see here, no one wants to be our friends. We can't get trade with England, our neighbors. That's really tough. And that makes me wonder if we need to be scared of what they're planning for us, so we Master, we recruit a spy and send him down to the border just to keep an eye out to make sure they don't do anything stupid against us. And also, we recruit a new army, a new general, and we're looking for somebody who can lower construction costs because it is so expensive. There's this guy here, but he has a lot of debuffs, but we instead end up going for this guy here. He is good enough for us. Odlan, I think it's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, but he will do. And of course we need to give him the cavalry unit because we don't have any cavalry right now. And we need those to hunt down skirmishers. But we, we start sending down our spy to York and luckily for us, there aren't anybody there yet. So this is currently our next target. Then I think we should probably start building our upgrading our buildings now. And thereby, therefore, I go into the working stance here just to test it out. And things get more expensive now, but construction time has been lowered. And so instead of just putting one in working stance and put both in working stance, and then this here will allow the barracks building when we just get over to it. We only take nine turns to be built. That's really good for us because we are going to need those barracks here because we are in hostile territory here. Nobody is going to like us up here. And that's why we also go into the construction technology tree here just to improve our building time. And it's only going to be the first three because they are the ones we are actually able to get in a reasonable amount of time in terms of technology time otherwise we can just go for some of the other things after that 
And then now I'm just kind of looking at the mercenaries to see and compare them to our own units. And these mercenaries here, we're not going to recruit them yet because they're going to be very important for us in the future. As you can see right here, the Kingdom of England, they are trying to demand gold from us. And we, of course, accept it. We allow them gold because I don't want them on our borders. But it doesn't matter because Ireland, fucking Ireland, declares war on us. It's so sad. We just took the town and Ireland declares war on us. And England has two armies at our border. And this makes me really scared, so... I need to figure something out here. So we go into diplomacy, and I see that England are at war with France. So in order for us to just get a bit out of this, we ask to join their war for like an immigration pact. They won't accept that, but instead we can get a trade agreement and a lot of gold. Can't get anything else than that, but it's gonna be more than enough. And because England is a reliable faction, they should attack us. So now. In theory, we are safe from England and only have to worry about Ireland coming towards us, which they almost definitely will. But we still have a, few, a bit of time until they can reach us because they need to sail all the way over here from their little island. Right now, I'm just looking at the units available here to see what they actually can offer us, and it's only immune to snow attrition but that's very good for us because we are all the all the way up here in the far north where snow is we need good like a, the norm basically it's everywhere snow and we're gonna do that continuously still looking at the mercenaries to see if we should get some of them i was debating whether or not i should get the cavalry but that would just destroy our economy more than it already is destroyed we wouldn't do that. But these units here are very strong and we're now looking, but we're still looking to get even better units. That's why we are going to upgrade the barracks here to a level 2 so we can get those axe men. Those axe units are going to be much better than these Geodruth warriors here, but they are also strong, okay? Don't underestimate them they can do a lot of work as you can see now the enemy has now arrived at our shores they have not actually invaded our territory yet but they have an army right outside and it's just about a matter of seconds before they attack us so we send our army into the, the settlement just to be protected and luckily for us the public order is still fine just for a few turns but now we get hit by the plague as well and that means we're going to take attrition, so we can't actually stay inside the town because we don't want to spread across into the city as well with the other army we have. So we're going to set them outside in a uh, fortification stance and just hope nothing bad is going to happen and that they won't actually invade our territory just yet. But of course they do, and guess what? It's actually a completely different army. They have two armies at our border. This is insane. We have one army and it's taking attrition and the enemy have two. And right here, to be honest, I probably should have attacked them and gotten rid of the army that actually invaded our territory. But I was playing defensive here and hoping that they would besiege the town and we could use our walls to our advantage. Boy lost alert. That's not going to happen. Now I'm just looking at the different uh, environmental uh different differences there are when there's summer and so on because it really hurts us in the future the environment it really uh, puts a stake in our wheel so we can't actually move but now both irish armies are on our land and we need to figure out what to do here and we can't have our second army outside the settlement just yet but for now I'm debating whether or not we should attack them and if we can do anything, like, do we have a night battle ability? We don't. But that's not good, so I'm not sure whether we should attack. Probably thinking right now that we shouldn't and therefore we're going to stay inside the town for now. But staying inside the town was not a good idea because it will soon become much, much worse, the situation here. Because right now only one army is raiding us, but... Then the next turn, 
both armies are raiding us, meaning we're now both losing gold and losing food. We're in a food shortage. So we can't stay in the town now because we've just been hit by the plague. It's luckily gone, but now we are losing food. We're starving, so we need to get out there, destroy them. And luckily for us, you can see here that one army is coming from the left of us. Meaning, we have an advantage here. They are not actually merged together. We can catch one army of guards, so that's what we're doing here. Keeping all the units in behind, or moving them out, so we can just get information here. Running towards the area where the enemy are. Then when we finally spot them, we are gonna get over there and just try to block them all here. As you can see on the tactical map, the other, the other army is very far away from here. They are nowhere near us, so this should be a good situation for us. We just charge the enemy cavalry with our spears, take them out as quickly as possible, use our few spears in the right situations, and then we're just gonna try to encircle the enemy here, sending our units all the way around, leaving some axemen in the center, and then our other spearmen all the way out on the flank. And then our General and the heavy units, they can just come in here in the caps here and just deal with the enemy as like a flank maneuver whenever the other enemy units have been engaged. But me still being a bit skeptical about how fast the enemy actually can move, we need to figure out a way to secure ourselves. So we can't engage all the armies just yet, or all the units just yet. So these four units here, they're gonna block off the path to our rear units here, so they can't just recharge them or anything. And that makes me a bit more secure dealing with all this over here, So we, because right now we have our backs turned against enemy main force. But we are just slowly encircling them while the cavalry is trying to flank around or get out of there, but it's not gonna be long until we actually end up getting completely involved here and just make sure they can't move. I'm just gonna let you enjoy this few moments here until I feel like I need to explain something again.
Okay, let me tell you something, something here, okay? At this very moment, where we are right now, we should have disengaged. We've just defeated one complete army here, we've taken minor casualties. But we are exhausted, and the second army is closing in on us very fast. We should have just pushed that little white flag on our action bar and just gotten the fuck out of there. There's no reason no no zero zip nada no reason at fucking all for us to stay here like all these units wearing they're gone good just get back into the castle where we are safe we have dealt with the enemy army all food situation should be sorted out by these guys not being able to raid anymore we decide or i decide here sorry that uh we can probably win this battle here, we can just beat both armies in one sweep. And we can't. It's bad. It's very bad this one here. But I'm not gonna show you this one. Just basically allow me to say that we lost this one. And as you can see by the losses here, it's quite a lot. We lost our entire army. Very bad. And because of this, we need to figure out something else to do. And I kind of panic here because they can just destroy us easily now, so I just buy every single mercenary available to us and just say, okay, good, now you work for me, save my fucking ass. Luckily for us, they are willing to work for us. The following turn, our leader got wounded. Magnus Barefoot now was unable to help us in our dire situation here. So, Rutlan, our former army general, would have, to, would have to step up here but I, there wasn't much you can do here because enemy army they were still stuck together and we were now losing men again but our food situation it was much better or much better not much better it's still the same but what we have to do is still just wait for the right opportunity just get a few more units here just getting as much power as we can slowly end up having more men than them because we're currently replenishing while they are not and actually at this point here i thought to myself maybe with these extra men here we should probably be able to defeat both armies we are fairly evenly matched now in terms of power ranking but as i get into the battle here i see their forces here together and just think to myself Wait a minute, this is actually not a good idea to fight them right now. This is a very bad situation. And also, just look at this formation, these units here, they can put, go into this triangle. It's amazing. I don't know why. But uh, I decided to myself, let's not fight it here. Let's concede the battle. And then wait for a better opportunity for us. So we retreat, go back into the settlement, and we can't really do much else than that. Hopefully, nothing bad is gonna happen to us in the meantime. They're still gonna raid us, and we can't really do much about it. We're just gonna have to recruit a few more men to our cause, like these Axemen here. Although they are quite expensive, it's what we can get, and they will certainly help us. Oh wait, never mind, I actually went for these uh, Spearmen here instead. I actually forgot about this, just so we can get more variety in the army. But it was at this point here, I thought to myself. The last strategy in the first battle was actually kind of good. Taking on one army and then just probably should have left. So maybe we can do the same here because they are really far away from each other. And if we take one, we already know where the other one is going to come in. So if we can just catch them off guard, we would be in safe hands. So what we'll just have to do is just merge our units together. 
buy the last few mercenaries we can get and then attack the army on the right top top right yeah because that's the army with cavalry and that's the one i don't want to fight first so we go up there and we attack them like this and we realize and just double check that everything is good here. It's the right army that's uh, coming in as reinforcements. And then making sure that they are coming in on the left. The other army. And we just go in. And in order for us to find them on the left. We need to put every single unit out there on the left. Just make care yeah, everything. Get them up there. Get ready. We can of course see that some of the enemy units are already over there. But a typical Rome 2 AI thing is that they want to face us head on. So if they see all our units on one side, they think, Oh no, this flank here is vulnerable. Let's, uh, let's regroup and move around. So that's what they're gonna do. While we have this one army here with these five units that just had before, they're supposed to protect our rear, while all the other units are just gonna try to encircle and envelop these guys here that's coming into the field. And as we can see here, our expectations were correct. They are coming in from the left side. Now we're just going to move forward here just so our units can get in position. And our general is just going to make small bait here. Just make sure that they don't get too close to the, to the enemy force over there. They're still trying to get away. The cavalry gets away. It's fine. We can deal with them getting away. We have our spearmen and archers to defend against them. But the other infantry here, if they get stuck with our units, we're gonna take them out easily. And our general, he's just gonna move around them just to make sure they're staying in this very same position here. And to be honest, this was really an amazing battle and I don't think I'm gonna spoil anything for you. If you wanna watch it, you can watch it. If you wanna just jump around in the video, you can do so as well. I'm just gonna let you enjoy it and I'll be back with you after this battle here.
With them being defeated, I really felt like Napoleon Bonaparte here because he basically used his tactics in terms of how to win battles. We used their superior numbers but had them spread out and just took off one small section of their army at a time and eventually ended up getting the upper hand. And now we can just decisively force us all the a battle here and get rid of them. The Irish forces are no longer in our territory. But this doesn't mean we are safe. Not at all because they're just gonna regroup and prepare for another attack because when I tried to get peace they refused and I'm not even gonna attempt to get a peace with them with gold so that's not gonna happen. And we need to get rid of all of our mercenaries as well because they're taking up quite a lot of income. We are in serious debt right here. But by getting rid of all these guys, we get enough money to be able to build a new army. So we should, in theory, have a bright future ahead of us. But for now, we just need to increase our chances here and getting something we need. And this one is very important because I really want to get those ambush battles here. So everything in that order we're gonna go for so this one it will help us over a further time in the future to get ambush battles for us so we can destroy our enemies that way but there's also another ability right here that's gonna give us more uh, ambush chances so that's the road we're gonna go through and there is also night battles in that row so that's best, definitely the best one for us right now it's even campaign movement range, so pretty much just the best. Let's get a general that's recruitment focused. But with that said, I would like to say thank you so very much for watching. And until the next time, everybody, goodbye and spread happiness. Do you want to become an important member of this channel? Then you should join our Discord server. Here, you can climb the Roman Senate and become an important member of our community. You will be able to vote on everything from army rosters in a campaign to YouTube content and schedules. All roles are based on the Roman Cursus Honorum, except for the unique and powerful Lawkeeper role. The first 50 people 
joining will become petitions and thereby be able to run for office and vote. But with that said, let's start the video.